This is your boy Eli from SB, and I'm checking in with Jay Allen TV. Let's get it. What's good, E, man? Welcome to Jay Allen TV, bro. What's good, Brody? How you living, man? Doing good, working. All right, man. All right, man. So I peeped your, uh, your new tape, man, A Letter to My Heart. What tracks are hidden differently for you, and what can we expect for some new visuals? Oh, yeah, that's out now. You know, dropped the first, December 1st, uh, 13 tracks. I got, like, five features from the gang. Uh, I got one city feature, Mermelly. Go check her out. Um, but my, my highlighted tracks would be, like, Vibe Out, um, You Ain't For Me, I got Dying To Live. It's a, it's a lot of bangers on there. I feel like all 13 bangers, but I feel like Every, everybody's ear different, so they hear different. You'll fuck with the track you fuck with. Um, but yeah, that's out now. I feel like that tape will show a whole lot of growth from where I started at, too. So, yeah, go check that out, man. Yeah, man. So, and talk to us, bro. Is there noticeable growth from Broken Music 2 to now? What's the evolution like? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Like, like I said in the last uh the growth definitely there. You can see a big development in the work, the production. Um, it's more track. I did on this project, my newer project, I had more tracks than just me. Um, Broken Music 2 was a lot more features. I think I had like two singles on there. Um, but a lot of songs I, I worked with my, uh, my team with, you know, and I did a lot of collaborations on that project. So I feel like the, the growth, the growth definitely there, the, uh, me be able to do more songs by myself is there. Like, you can see like, all right, he more comfortable doing songs by himself and put him on his project, you feel me? Then you look at his previous projects, you'd be like, all right, he got more features from his gang, ooh. But yeah, now I'm getting more comfortable, more in my bag now, so like, yeah. All right, man, so break it down with me. What's the vibe difference between your solo projects and the joint projects, especially the ones that you do with Key? Uh, my solo projects more like you get more of a variety of music. Uh, the jokes with me and Key more for like selected to like the females. <laughs> like it's like more vibes, so you can just ride with your girl too. Shit, have a movie too. Fuck, fuck your girl too. <laughs> like it's just shit like that. Like real <laughs> vibes. Like yeah. Like you go get you check both of those out. Uh, vibes you can't deny. You know real vibes R and B. Key and Eli is out there on Apple Music, YouTube. You got a few vi uh, visuals out there for that. So yeah, like both of those went crazy. Got a lot of good feedback on those, especially the solo projects too, but the vibes are going crazy. Right, right, man. So you know we're in December right now, so looking ahead to 2024, what's the game plan? Any big moves you should be anticipating for the music front? Shit, the game plan for 2024, just uh, just keep going harder. I'm going uh, to get back on the road, start traveling, uh, do a lot more interviews, a lot more moves like I did, like DGB, uh, you know, link up with a lot more artists, just try to like collab with a lot more uh, artists in different states, try to reach a further fan base, shit like that. Like, I feel like 2024 is gonna be the year of like real growth and real expansion. Like, niggas gonna know who SB is. Like, that's the move, like that's the game plan for the shit. All right, so Eli, who are you eyeing to collaborate with next year, man? Any dream features in the works? Shit, uh, I'm trying to link up with PG Rye. That's what, that's what, that's somebody I want to work with out of South Carolina. Uh, Shoebox Baby out out of Chicago. Uh, some city features from the city. I, uh, I got a feature with a dude named Riley. I'm about to do a song with my boy Mal P. Do a couple more songs with my boy T. Gang, you know, Mike Santana, um, Key. Um, I'm just going to work with anybody who's willing to work with me. But um, big features, I'm trying to like, hit different cities and just try to touch their fan bases too with that so that's the plan so bro fans are hungry for more man when can we expect a project from you and mike santana again give us the scoop <laughs> that's my brother man we always gonna have something that works we got a lot of unreleased stuff that we ain't even dropped yet i got a few songs we gonna drop i'm put on my my project and i just chopped it up with mike you know so he, he want to do another project we're gonna do one that's what the streets phone that's how i started eli mike santana go look it up Tons of vids, we got four or five tapes out. Big Futures from Prince Dre to Valley Baby. We got a lot of shit, like, that's a good movement, good era. You feel me? So we're gonna get back, give the fans what they want. You feel me? Drop a couple vids, you feel me? He got his shit, he about to drop his tape. He just dropped a new vid, Slime Out. So go check that out. Slime Out, man. You feel me? Like, straight gang shit, man. 
but never left, man. We just we just had different shit we had to nah, do. For real though, different man. Shit take a, care of. There's a lot of people been asking, man, man. A lot of people said, man, like they never thought y'all would ever like you know go solo like that, you know. So nah, I, ain't, nah, I ain't no solo thing. I feel like every artist got at least like show fans they can do something like by themselves, like. You feel me? A solo, a, a solo project to a solo video. Like right. you, you just gotta be able to show like you can do it by yourself. That's what labels want to see, the fans want to see, and they want to see the duo too. But they at least want to see your diehard fans. Well, right, I want to see this a straight Eli project. I want to see a straight Mike Santana project. A straight Key, straight Rick. Anybody? They just want to see. They want my like, yo. Your diehards are always going to see that. So I say that for that question. You feel me? That's a fact, man. That's a fact, man. That's an inside game for y'all right there, man. No cap. Eli, any big name features you aiming for in 2024? Who you trying to lock in the studio with to make magic happen? Shit, like I said, uh, like, big names, like, shit, if I get lucky, like Keith, baby. You feel me? If the bag real right, I'm, I'm, I'm aiming for them. You feel me? Like, but like sure. I said, I'm trying to lock in the different cities, like Atlanta, North Carolina, shit like that. I'm trying to get the my side straight so when i do come to them i can come correct you feel me oh for sure man for sure like keith sosa no that's shot. a legend right there man that's a legend in the game man okay shout out to sosa man shout out to sosa man shout out to baby too man for real okay so eli man let's talk influences man who are some artists that inspire your sound and how do they impact your creative process Shit, big influence by Sosa, like Keith, like, shit, I'm like 13, him, 14, sure. I don't like coming on, I'm going crazy. Love Sosa come on, I'm going crazy. Finally, when you come out, I'm so, like, so big influence for my music definitely was like Keith. Like, when I first started rapping, like, I used to try to rap like that nigga, so, like, that's definitely tell you a big influence. Uh, my big brother, he was a big influence, but, like, Sosa, like, he showed me, like, you can, you can come from nothing and get that shit, like, no matter what situation you're in, you can get that bag. You can be something. So, like, yeah. And, like, the way he lives is how I'm going to live that bitch. But ten times harder. <laughs> no cap. Ten times harder, man. Ten times. And that's one thing about you, man. You got, you always got that that charismatic thing about you, man. Hey, you again, know. you already know. Like, yeah. We've been doing this shit, man. For sure, man. Real star in the making, man, for real. No cap. So Roanoke, Virginia isn't always in the spotlight, though. How does your hometown influence your music, and how do you feel a responsibility to put it on the map? Shit, uh, I feel like, I don't know about responsibility, but I feel like uh, if, if, if you're a good enough artist, I feel like you should be able to, like, your impact on your music could put spotlight on other people in your city's music. You feel me? Just like Chicago, they gonna wanna know, like, what's, like, what else is out there. You feel me? So I feel like, Shit, if I got on, shit, like, I feel like my music impact could put spotlight on the city, most definitely like, on some Keith shit. Like, but I feel like any artist that blow, like, I feel like your imp if you really want impact and influence, you got to be able to put spotlight on other people. You feel me? And really, like, blow that shit up. Like, shit go crazy. Like, I feel like, yeah. I feel like I can do that show, you know, for sure. For sure, man. So as an artist, how do you navigate the balance between staying authentic to yourself and adapting to the industry trends. Shit, I'ma stay real to myself. Like, like you can hear it through my music, everything I spit is real, like real life. So I feel like I'm always stay true. Like that's just me. That's what always just wants just stay in me. Like I don't feel like the industry will ever switch me up, change me. I know the real, the ins and outs already. So like, ain't too much that can like fool me. You feel me? Or switch my my ways or my narrative, or my game plan, or how I'm coming into the game. So I feel like, nah, I'm like. I'm a grown man. Can't nobody influence me to do different. So, like, my mind already set. And that's respect, man. That's respect. So, collaborations can be a game changer. Are there any unexpected artists or genres you'd be interested in collaborating with to switch up your musical style? Any genre I have a child like to switch up to, I'd be like pop. Pop kind of like the same as like R&B. I work people like Rihanna, shit like that. Like. Lady Gaga, I do some crazy shit, like the beat right, everything right, like I, I fuck with some pop, like I play like, I, I, I feel like that's like the only genre I probably like outside of rap or R&B, like I probably like fuck with a little bit, cause that's like we're, we're like the real bag at too, so I fuck with it, depending on who the artist is, like I said, like Rihanna, somebody reach out, or they be doing that, somebody, a huge pop artist that I know that's hot, or I came up listening to a little bit, I heard them on the radio, yeah, we gonna do it, most of stuff. So in a streaming dominated era, how do you think the landscape of the music industry has changed? 
and how do you navigate it as an independent artist? Oh, that's way better to, like now than back then. I ain't I ain't trying to carry no damn thousands of CDs and go to right. city to cities and hand that shit out. I can send a link, tag a hundred niggas. They shared about five thousand people have seen it. That's about fifteen thousand streams. That's like fifteen thousand copies I had already sold from my bedroom. So it was like. Nah, man. I I most definitely fuck with this era more more than the old square. I feel like the old square music was more authentic, most deaf, but I feel like this era better as far as like actually promoting your music. It's easier to just hit somebody up in the inbox, DM them, get their attention, go viral. Back then it was hard to even do anything. That you really had to have a hit and we really had to have connections and we really had to know somebody who knows somebody. Really word of mouth, real on the street talking. So like, yeah, bro, like this era most definitely. Most definitely, gang. <laughs> oh, for sure, man. For sure, man. Like, I agree, too, because, like, how you said, like, the old days, they had, like, more authentic music. Like, it has, like, more playback value where, like, even today, like, you know, a lot of artists, is, like, they sample, they, they, they beats Hell yeah. from the old classic. Most definitely. That's what, and that's like, you know, it's always a pain of homage. Hell yeah. So like one day, you know, maybe an artist is gonna like sample your song. You that's never dope. know. That's that's you know? That'd be all right. They getting sued though, they don't pay me. <laughs> oh, so I'm, I'm acting like boozy. Oh, boozy. <laughs> pay me my money. <laughs> Hit me. Get that damn cease and desist, nigga. The cease and desist, man. Go. Hey, Go. Another lesson, gem of the game, man. Make sure y'all pay up and get y'all Y'all, you know. Get your paperwork paper, right, man. It's paperwork. all about business, man. Get it's your business, business side man. right, right, wave. So your lyrics often delve into personal experiences too. How yeah. do you decide which aspects of your life to share with your audience and what do you keep private? I don't keep nothing private. Like everything you gonna hear in the music, like everything I've been through, like I said, like I feel like uh, sharing your real story, it'd be similar to somebody's story out here, so they'll be able to feel it, what you're going through. They'll be more be able to adapt to it. They'll be able to, like, damn, this is some real shit. Like, I've been through that. Like, damn, I'm going through this now. Like, what the fuck? Like, so you, you always want to give your real side of real story, everything you've seen, everything you've been through. So you don't want to give them that wishy washy shit, because anybody can be able to read that shit. Like, he ain't never been through that. He ain't never seen this before. So I just try to give, like, the real side of me to anything, like my lyrics, everything that's real. So, like, you can't say it in that cap, because I'm giving you the real me. My, like I said, uh, track 13, uh, Let Them Heart, life stories, my life story. So like, you can't deny my life story, so it's like, it's real. You can't deny All it. facts. All facts, man. All facts, man. So everyone's got a favorite studio story. Can you share a memorable or a funny moment from behind the scenes while he's working on the project? Sheesh. My project? Uh, I don't know, bro. <laughs> There's been a lot of wild shit. I like the wildest shit, though, when I threw water on that nigga Reek's face. He was asleep. Mid-session, was working on, uh, this like on one of the Vibes tape. Worth it. He sleeps. Big little drool, come down his big little fat lip. All types of stuff. Just like Keith and this dude Young Chop. This, Woke him up. I said, that's like one of the craziest, like funny little stories we had. Other than that, though, I be getting high, though, bro. So I was, I don't know, bro. A lot of shit that happened in my life. <laughs> yeah. Hear me? Yeah, man. Um, shout out to Reek, though. Shout out to Reek, man, already, man. So, man, I ain't want to get too deep into, man, but the situation, man, where you allegedly had gotten shot, man. <laughs> Yeah, you got me dead. Yeah, man, I was like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, 2021, something like that. That was just some bullshit, you know. Motherfuckers ain't, motherfuckers ain't wanna really do nothing. You feel me? Pull a little blick out real quick on some John Wick shit. Try to take a soldier out, but you know, I'm still here and shit, you know. A little minor setback, but you know, I'm here back better. 100%, you know, man. so. Fuck them, you feel me? A lot of men say, fuck them. <laughs> well, that's an testament to, man, like, your dream was bigger 
Oh, hell yeah. Your dream was too bigger than anything, man. Hell yeah, but so, I'm, I'm shining forever. Shining forever, man. So, if you could give one piece of advice to an inspiring artist right now, what would it be? Uh, I'd say to like, keep going, keep grinding, keep going, like, just believe in your dream, like, you gotta invest, you feel me? Get the money first, cause without the money, ain't nothing gonna happen, you feel me? So I said like, just, just keep, like, just keep doing what you're doing, keep going, get that money, get that bag, run it up, chase the dream, keep going. Wise words, I'm slutty, but it's real shit though. Mm. So what's one thing you wish you knew when you were starting out? Shit. What's that one thing you wish, like, all right, if I had to start all over all again, but I had this one knowledge, what's one thing I wish I, I would have known from the start? Shit, that you need money management. Like, you got to be able to balance this shit out. That's one thing I wish. When I first started, I wish I would, like, really knew about money management. And, like, like just, like, more of, like, the business side, too. Those two things I'd probably keep with me if I had to start over, all over. Okay, man. I like that. I like that. Another gem from E, veteran of the game, man. Gems. I'm going to soak this all up, man. This, free game, man. It's about a 20-minute interview right now, man. Better soak this all up. Finally, Eli, man, let's talk legacy, man. When it's all said and done, what mark do you hope to leave on the rap game? And what do you want your fans to remember you for? Shit, I just want to be like one of the greats, you feel me? I just want to be like, all right, this nigga, he one of the niggas that, feel me, broke that barrier out of Virginia. Like, it don't even matter. I, I just want to be like, I just want to break that barrier. Like, I feel like if you break that barrier, you'll be known forever. Like, or just making it, like, period, you'll be known. Like, they'll be like, yeah, he made it. Oh, he made his impact. He put shit, the city going crazy because of him. Like, it's just certain shit. Like, yeah, I feel like. Before I go or when everything's said or done with, they can be like, yeah, this nigga put put the city on, his team put the city on, like, yeah, on some SB shit, like, SB gonna be known forever, bro. SB, man. That's the legacy right there. SB, OZB shit, man.